I never wanted to make this video because I like to upload quality stuff, you know, where I put a lot of time and effort into it, but I'm, I'm literally at the point where I don't know what else to do but make this video. For the last month and a half, I have had a stalker, and this stalker has done everything they can to try to destroy my life and my livelihood, which is my YouTube channel. I've received messages nearly every single hour for the last 35 days from this man. And now we're at the point where this man has placed four copyright strikes on my videos to get my channel terminated. Because YouTube's rules, well, if you get three strikes, your channel's donezo. But YouTube has done absolutely nothing to help me out in this situation. Now this stalker is so vicious that I've had to hire a private investigator, a cyber harassment litigation firm, and a copyright attorney. So who is this stalker and why is he doing this to me trying to ruin my YouTube channel? Now, I mentioned this stalker in one of my most recent videos about the Xbox Underground hackers. And one of the hackers that was arrested for hacking into the US military and all of that, his name is Sinet. And Sinet has been the absolute scum of the earth for the last fucking month and a half. I genuinely fear for my life at this point. I've had to move out of where I live. I've had to change fucking all of my shit because this guy is just seeping into every personal aspect of my life to try to fuck it up. So just keep this in mind. Sinet is a hacker that pled guilty to hacking into the United States government and now he is stalking me. So this guy's got the skills to really fuck up my life. So why is Sinet doing this, you might ask? So when I was making this video, I saw that Sinet had done an interview about all of his crimes publicly on the Darknet Diaries podcast. Great podcast, nothing bad to say about it. So because he had done that public interview, I messaged Sinet thinking that he'd be open to do an interview with me. And I sent him a really nice thing stating, hey, I'm just looking to pick your brain about some stuff. But Sinet tells me he doesn't want to do the interview. He wants nothing to do with me, which is fine. I totally get it. He says he's turned down people who have made docu-series on Netflix, okay, whatever. But then Sinet starts telling me that I should move on from this story, that I probably shouldn't even make this video, because everyone wants to forget about it. So I tell Sinet, hey man, I understand where you're coming from, and that's it at the end of the day. I don't, I don't say anything beyond that. So Sinet never responds back to my message, and I get working on the video. The, the story of the Xbox Underground, his story, has been told thousands of times. So I'm gonna tell it in my own way. So two months later, I publish my video, on July 25th, 2023. And the video's a one out of 10, it's doing really well. I'm really proud of it. But then, two days later, after not talking to Sinet for about, maybe about two months, I start to receive all of these threats from Sinet on Twitter. And he says, yo, that video got me feeling some way about you right now as a person. You proved all you care about is views. That's why you never got the time of day. So I ignore the message, whatever, he's upset with it. The story's been told a thousand times. So on July 28th is when the harassment starts, this sophisticated stalking campaign. He's calling me a piece of scum, telling me I shouldn't be a YouTuber, and he's sending me tweets every single hour all through the night, telling me, Vince, I believe that was nice when I said I wanted to leave it all behind, to claim to understand that and still make a video was low. All because I told him in that original message I sent him that I understand why he's declining. I never said I understand and I'm not gonna do the video, but that's what he thinks. So he continues on about a piece of shit, story chaser, leave me alone. And then he sends me a private message. Now this is interesting. Sinet tells me, the scene is made of where, and I'll be posting my personal email in the video. Now the scene is the hacking scene. So pretty much it's a soft handed threat that uh, I should be shredding bricks because they are gonna come after me. So mind you, I'm not responding back to any of this. And then he starts posting on my Twitter account what Vince Vintage is no different than a creeper who fondled the female when she says no. Sinet is not very good at typing. So now he's calling me like a sex pest at this point because I made a video that he didn't want made. Then he tells me to eat shit. And then at 6.20 a.m., Sinet's posting all night long. Think about it, all night long he's just thinking about this. He says, Vince Vintage, don't worry. Wait for my YouTube comment. Basically making an underhanded threat that something would happen through YouTube, but I don't know what it is. Now at 6.32 a.m., he sends me a private message. The whole scene is laughing at you. Basically talking about the hacking scene. Another soft-handed threat that the hacking scene would destroy my life. And all of this, I just ignore. And these are just the real highlights of all of the tweets. So the next day, July 29th, after I see Sinet tweeted me all fucking morning, I block him at 10.30 on July 29, 2003 on 
everything. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, whatever. And then 93 minutes after blocking him, I get a DMCA claim on the video that he was trying to get me to take down by an Adam Chester. Now, Adam Chester provided an email, adamchester3 at protonmail.com, which if you don't know, ProtonMail is notoriously used by hackers to hide their identity, which Sinet pleaded guilty to hacking into the US government. The timing of Adam Chester copyright striking my video was very suspicious after Sinet had harassed me over 13 hours nonstop. So I email YouTube's copyright team and then I email Adam Chester to find out like what these claims were because this video that was doing so well is taken down and I'm extremely upset at this point. So at 4.17 a.m., the same time that Sinet was consistently harassing me, Adam Chester responded to my email asking what these copyright infringements were. And he said, I'll have to check on that, but I'm traveling. Though I remember it was for multiple copyright infringements. As far as I remember, there were multiple other videos on your channel which violate my copyrights. But for now, I have not filed those strikes since three strikes in 90 days leads to your channel getting banned. Just be careful in future videos. Have a good weekend. So Adam Chester can't tell me what these copyrighted infringements were on every single video on my channel that could lead to my channel getting banned. He's given me a soft-handed threat that if I don't remove this video, he's gonna go through and strike more videos on my channel to give me more of a hard time to try to terminate my shit. So here's the fucking gnarliest part of all of this. Now, when you get a copyright strike on your video, the YouTuber, you could file a counterclaim against that strike. And it basically states that, no, this actually wasn't copyrighted material. It's fair use, you make your argument. But when you send that counter notification, you have to put your legal name, your legal address, your phone number, all that information. So when they file the lawsuit, if they do, they know where to send it to. Now, I knew that Sinet was using this copyright claim system to not only screw with me by not having the video up, but also trying to obtain my real information to dox and swap me. So I hire an attorney at this point to legally represent me on the counterclaim because I knew Sinet was trying to do this to fuck with me. So I'm like, I got an attorney. Everything's going to be all good. This guy won't know my name. So I put the attorney's name, all of their info on the counterclaim. We fill out the form. We send it out to YouTube. But YouTube does not accept the form with my attorney's name on it. YouTube says that I have to provide my legal name tied to my AdSense account. Although the person filing the copyright takedown has to provide no identification, no proof of anything about their fucking identity. So I have to show my full government name to this convicted hacker to file this counterclaim to get my video back up. That shit's so fucked up to me. So I filed a counterclaim with my, my legal name but my attorney's email, address, phone number, and YouTube finally accepts the claim. And basically, the attorney wrote up this thing about all the copyright violations and why they were BS. Adam Chester Sinet was saying that a ABC7 news clip was actually his that I used on my video. So we just sent the actual clip of the ABC7 from YouTube and being like, no, this is their clip, not Adam Chester. Adam Chester had no registered trademarks or copyrights to any of that stuff in the footage. So the whole thing was just BS right there. So after I filed a counterclaim that Adam Chester, which is Sinet, gets a copy of, Sinet leaves a tweet directed at me, even though I blocked him on Twitter. And he says, at least he was man enough to pull down the video. However, he was still a bitch. Instead of saying sorry, he pulls the video down and blocks me. How can someone be so asinine is beyond me. So Sinet's playing dumb here. Oh, oh, at least he was man enough to pull down the video, but he's still a bitch. Whatever. We'll see a lot more of this in the future. So now it's August 1st, 2023. I have Sinet blocked on Twitter. But then he goes around, he starts tweeting publicly that whoever Adam Chester is, I'm going to find him and strengthen the claim. He stole lines from Jack Recider, the Dark Knit Diaries podcast, and provides no evidence for what lines I stole. Now, what's super interesting about this is that Sinet knows Adam Chester took down the video. Now, when a video is taken down for a copyright strike, it is delisted from YouTube. It cannot be searched. It isn't even shown in my channel. So how would Sinet possibly know that Adam Chester was the guy that made the claim? Hmm. Well, I think Adam Chester is Sinet. 
So at this point, I contact YouTube support and several partner managers, and I to lay out all of the harassment, I have all of the tweets, the messages, the BS, the MCA claims, and YouTube tells me we can't do anything about it. You just have to go through the system. A couple days after sending my counterclaim to YouTube, that begins a 10 business day waiting period for a copyright lawsuit to be filed. In this case, Adam Chester would have 10 days to file a copyright lawsuit. And if he doesn't, well, my video gets to go back up on YouTube. So Adam Chester sends me a lengthy email telling me to take away my counter notification so the video's gone forever and that he's gonna sue me for harassment and, and copyright infringement if I leave the video up, if I basically keep the copyright notification there. So we ask Adam Chester for his legal information and then Adam sends an email back saying, I kindly request that you just withdraw your counter notification. Then he says he can't tell us the details of his legal team and then he says that all of the claims of all of the copyright infringements is over a million dollars USD that I would pay him if I left this video up. And then he continues to say that I keep harassing him. And then he ends the email saying that if I don't want to take down the video, don't even respond back to me because I'm not talking to you anymore. So we just don't respond back to Adam Chester knowing that I know deep down that this is just Sinet trying to fuck with me. The next day on August 10th, I don't want to live my life in fear anymore. I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to block this guy like a little bitch. I'm just going to unblock him and just be free. So Sinet sends me private messages 23 minutes after unblocking him. This guy is checking my Twitter non-stop every day, every minute to see if I unblocked him. And 23 minutes later, he begins sending me a barrage of messages. He says, I see you unblocked me. Why? Also, FYI, I don't know who Adam Chester is. How would you know? No one can see the video. How would you know who Adam Chester is? Oh, because you are him. Then he says, however, I did have the one on archive removed personally. I don't lie and I say things for what they are. Now, this didn't make sense for a long time until yesterday. Now, when the video was taken down from YouTube, one of my amazing subscribers took my video and they re-uploaded it on the archive.org for others to watch because you couldn't watch the original on YouTube. So that video, I checked it recently and it was gone for a DMCA copyright strike claim. And Sinet in this message is telling me that he removed it. So he removed the archive.org one, but he had, oh, he had nothing to do with my YouTube channel one. Fucking sure, bro. And then he continues to say, with all honesty, Adam Chester could be one of Nathan or Anthony's friends. No offense, but that video was a bit hurtful. So I don't respond to Sinet's message. And then at 3.18 a.m., you know, Sinet's normal operating time, he sends me two more private messages on Twitter. He says, what's funny is I even hinted and said this was old news, and I wanted it dead. So you have control over this story being alive or dead? This man just continues to message me and tells me that he wanted it dead, and he wanted it killed, and then Sinet begins to message me a sob story about how hurtful my video was and how I triggered his PTSD so bad and that the EMTs had to inject him with Ativan. So because my video gave you PTSD, you could copyright strike it. So keep in mind, the story that I told about Sinet has been told thousands of times online. So why is my video in particular so hurtful to him that causes PTSD? And you know what's crazy to think is that all of this stems because I asked him for an interview. If I never asked him for that, this probably would have never happened. So now at this point with him sending me all of these messages and continuing to just harass me, I'm like, I don't know what the fuck this guy's capable of. So I hire a private investigator to do a full comprehensive background check on Sinet because I wanted to find out, could I file a restraining order against them? Could I file a cease and desist? Could I file a false or a fake DMCA lawsuit against them? Does Sinet have any gun permits? Had he committed any violent crimes? And where does he live? Because I don't know what this guy is capable of. So the private investigator sends me a report that is 160 pages long about everything in his life. That Sinet is 37 years old, has no job. He lived at his mom's house and he just moved into his uncle's apartment that he lives in for free. And that he had tried to commit suicide the year before. Now normally I wouldn't bring that up. But we're talking about Sinet having nothing left to lose and all of the time in the world to just fucking harass me. 
Now, because my legal name was given to Adam Chester, who was Sinet, Sinet, a hacker who pled guilty into hacking into the US fucking government, begins harassing my fiance. Sinet had found my fiance's phone number and began texting her, pretending to be fucking me. Now, because I had Sinet's full background check at this point, I am freaking the fuck out. And I know exactly where he lives. I knew that the area code of this random number that texts my fiance, well, it's the same area code that Sinet lives at. What are the odds? Now, let me just give you some facts. My fiance is a school teacher. She doesn't, we've been together for 10 years. She has never had random numbers message her like this. So to have this happen from the same area code, the phone number, all out of the blue, while Sinet's been harassing me for the last month and a half, it's a little weird. Now, at this point, I knew that Sinet was he was stalking me. It was, it was straight up stalking me. And I don't know what the fuck this guy was capable of. So me and my fiance move out of her home. We move the fuck out because I don't know that this guy that fucking hacked into the government, what, what the fuck is he going to do? Because YouTube forced me to give my fucking name to him. This is what's going on in my life. And what, just keep in mind, this all stemmed from me asking for an interview. Now, days later on August 21st, my video that was copyright striked goes back up. And while my video was put back online, it was reset in the algorithm, basically just hurting me financially at this point. And while I did feel happy the video was back up, I knew in the back of my head that Sinet was going to copyright strike another video. Would it be the same one? Would it be a different one? I kept checking my YouTube studio every 30 minutes. I, I literally could not sleep. I just knew Sinet was going to get enraged and just copyright strike more videos and just trying to get me to fucking delete that video. And that's exactly what happened. So just a couple days later, I get another strike on one of my biggest videos of all time. And the copyright holder, the claimant in this one, was Jake Turner. Now, Jake Turner didn't have a Google account either. He had, once again, a ProtonMail account. JakeTurner91 at ProtonMail.com. Now, let me be clear. ProtonMail is super niche. No one uses it. So why would it be two people that both have copyright claims against all of my videos happen to also have the same super niche hacker email service. What are the odds of that? So I'm like, okay, whatever. You know what? He wants to play this game. Let's do it. So now it's not Adam Chester. No, it is Jake Turner now fucking with me. Now I'm on the phone with the attorney the next day and I'm about to prepare a cease and desist against the net because I don't know what else to fucking do. I've tried going through YouTube, I've tried doing all this shit, and just nothing's getting done. And then I get another strike on my one of my biggest videos of all time. And I'm like devastated at this point. I'm like, I have two strikes on two videos. If I get one more of these from this fucking piece of shit filth, my channel's done. So I'm like freaking out. I don't know what to do. I call the attorney again. And then I get a third strike on my channel. Everything that I've built over the past three years is about to be gone in 90 days now. All because a 37 year old piece of shit, low life loser who has nothing better to fucking do just wants it down and doesn't have to prove anything about it. I was so fucking mad when I got that third strike that I fucking threw my phone at the fucking wall. I was so fucking mad. I've been dealing with this for over a month and a half. You know, YouTube's consistently told me just file the counterclaim, wait 10 days. But the problem is when my next video goes up, it's gonna be copyright struck like that and the video's gone. And then it's, I gotta wait 10 days and then it restarts in the algorithm and then now it's fucking with my money. Like Sinet, if you wanna continue doing this, oh boy, you do not fucking know what is coming after you. I've already filed a fucking FBI report against your ass. I've already hired a private investigator to find out where you fucking live. I've already hired a cyber litigation stalking fucking firm to protect myself against your creepy ass. And a copyright attorney, unless you want to pull any shiesty shit like that. Do not fuck with me. I will fuck with you so much harder than you ever could fucking dream. You thought the bar of soap in the prison was bad? Oh, fuck. You don't even know what the fuck's coming for your ass. And I told you to stop multiple times and you continue to do this. And I tried handling this privately, but just like a big fucking cockroach, sometimes you gotta pull back the curtain and shine the light on it to get it to scatter up with the wall. Now what's the craziest thing about this is like, I am so thankful to be in a position where I could afford to get help like this. You know, to pay for a private investigator, pay for the attorneys. 
I, 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 I literally couldn't imagine if I wasn't in that situation what to do. You know, the thing I love to do the most is like, I've had a lot of jobs in my life, I've done a lot of things, and YouTube videos are like, it's like the greatest thing ever, you know? Absolutely love it. I love making the videos, I love putting in all the work, the writing, the animating. I love it. I would, I would never ever change it. And what's upsetting to me is that this situation has taken away my resources and time from making more YouTube videos that I love. It's the one thing I truly love to do. And I can't do that right now because my entire world is consumed by this. If I was to re-upload another video, Sinet would do this again. And he's probably gonna do it on this video. So get this video, download it, and re-upload it when he does it. Re-upload it because he's gonna do this. YouTube, I don't know what to do. You've absolutely done nothing to help me out. And it makes it really hard for me to spend hundreds of hours making a video only to have some loser fuck in his basement with no job living in his mom's house at 37 just take it down and it's really demotivating at this point and i'm at the point where i'm prepared to spend more money to take this guy to court to get injunctions to get harassment you know restraining orders i don't care so end of the day i just want to make more videos and the stalking thing has just absolutely consumed my life so as of right now i'm gonna be honest I'm running out of solutions. So just make sure to download this video and re-upload it because Sinet's gonna probably take it down again.